Welcome to the dry blood spot test training video. It's a minimally invasive finger prick test that requires less skill than formal venipuncture. This enables it to be used in a wide variety of settings, including in the community. It is, however, less sensitive than formal blood tests, and this is because it requires extra processing as well as a smaller sample of blood. Hello, thank you for agreeing to do the blood spot testing today. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. Great. So if I can just give you this, it's an information leaflet. If you just have a little read through, there's a couple of sides there. Mm -hmm. And anything you don't understand, let me know and I help explain it to you. When people are reading through the information leaflet, it is important you clarify with them. They have read the form thoroughly and are aware of what exactly we are testing them for. They need to be aware of window periods, how they will obtain their results, and what a reactive and negative test result mean. We also need to explain to them that if they are particularly concerned about a risk, then they should attend a local sexual health service. OK, that's fine, thank you. OK. Does that all make sense? So you understand yep. that what we're testing for, you understand how you're going to get your results? Yeah. And you understand what the window period is? The window period is from the time of infection to the time it takes for a test to become positive, as shown in this graph. Point A is the time of infection. Point B is the earliest time a test could be positive. The time between A and B is the incubation time. Point C is where the majority of tests will be positive. Point D is the point in time from when all the tests will be positive. Therefore, between A and D is the window period. Let me give you an example. For HIV, Using the fourth generation tests, testing for the P24 antigen and antibody, the earliest time a test will become positive is approximately 14 days. The window period is 12 weeks at point D. However, the test will be positive in 95% of cases at four weeks, i.e. at point C. In summary, we would recommend those who had had a significant exposure are tested at both 4 weeks and 12 weeks. A test should also be done at 12 weeks for hepatitis B, hepatitis C and syphilis, but a final test is sometimes recommended at 6 months for hepatitis C. Next, if I can ask you to fill in this registration and consent form. That'd be great. And there's two sides to that again as well. Next, you will give them a registration and consent form to fill in. You need to explain to the client that their details would be kept in the strictest confidence. Ensure that you have two forms of contact for each client. Explain to them that we need this information to ensure that we can contact them if we need to repeat the test. Okay, great. Just ensuring that you've got two points of contact. That's great, thank you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the equipment together and then we'll get on with the test. Okay, great. Is that all right? Yep. You would ensure that you wipe the surface clean with the Clonel wipe. Before you begin the procedure, you will need to wash your hands either with soap and water or with alcohol hand gel. You do this in the following way. At this point, you would ensure you have the correct equipment to undertake the dried blood spot test. Ensure that you have some Clonel wipes or detergent wipes, a sharps box, alcohol gel, an orange waste bag, a disposable tray, a Sturette wipe, a lancet, 
the dry blood spot collecting card, cotton wool, a plaster, and some gloves. Hi, okay, first of all, what I'm going to do is label the blood spot card. Okay. Is that all right? Yep. Let's get your registration form. It is imperative that the dry blood spot cards are accurately labelled to avoid the wrong result being delivered to the wrong person. There needs to be three pieces of identifying information on the test. Your identifying number, date of birth, initials and the date we're testing today. There also needs to be two checkpoints. Firstly, the tester with their ID number. And secondly, the patient can also clarify that you have placed the correct identifying information on their test card. The next thing, checking the lot number and the expiry date and documenting. Now we're ready to begin. So now we've filled this in, I'm going to explain the procedure to you before we start. Okay. What I'll do is I'll select one of your fingers and then using this lancet, I'll finger prick one of your fingers. Now this is like a diabetic doing a test for their blood sugars. Okay. It should not be painful. Okay. At that point we'll then put one spot of blood onto the blood spot card. Is that all right for you, with you? Yep, that's fine, thanks. Select an appropriate finger. We tend to use the index, middle or ring finger. Then, clean the selected finger with a stirette wipe. Allow 30 seconds for this to dry. Then, apply pressure to the end of the fingertip. Use the lancet in an off-centre position and press down firmly. At this point you should see a drop of blood. Squeeze the selected finger to encourage the blood to flow. When you have a blood drop, which is about the size of a raindrop, this should then drop onto the blood spot card. This is an appropriate sample size. It is important to get a good blood sample so that it will be processed in the laboratory. Carefully place the blood droplet onto each circle provided on the filter paper. Spotting should only be done on the printed side without touching the finger directly onto the paper and only one blood drop per circle. You will need to collect five blood spots. If you are finding they are difficult to bleed, you may want to ask them to stand up as this will encourage better blood flow. When you have collected all five blood spots, give the client a piece of cotton wool to apply pressure to their finger. Next, offer them a plaster to place over the finger prick. Now you will need to dispose of your equipment. When tidying up your waste, you need to ensure that all sharps are disposed of in the sharps container. All clinical waste needs to then be disposed of in the orange bin. Allow the blood spot specimen to air dry thoroughly on a flat, non-absorbent surface or in a blood spot drying rack. Do not stack the blood spot tests. Ensure they are kept in a cool location and out of direct sunlight. After the dry blood spot card has been allowed to air dry for at least two hours, you will now be able to send it to the lab. Place it inside a specimen bag with a silical gel and then seal the bag ready for transport. You will now give the client a results card. This will have a unique identifying number to that patient on the card. It will also have a telephone number 
and the date on which to call this number to obtain their results. So this is your ID number. Yep. This is the date on which to call this number to collect your results. Okay. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Now I just want to double check that we've got the correct mobile phone number here, just in case we need to contact you if we need to repeat the test. So if we just check that this is the correct mobile number, I'm just going to pop it into my phone okay. and see if it works. That's fine. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon again soon. Thank you.